Most people do not want to expend the effort that goes into thinking about others. They are lazy. They want them to be themselves. They want to be themselves, speak honestly, or do nothing and justify this to themselves as stemming from some great moral choice. Sound like Hafiz? Because it sure as shit did to me when I read this this morning. From an evolutionary psychology perspective, most human actions are strategic in the sense that these actions have an ultimate goal. Survival and reproduction. That's it. That's praxology right there. You want praxology? You got it right there. Understood? We ju I just gave you the dictionary. And now here I'm going to give you sort of like the updated layman's version of this. All right? So... Again, from the top, most human actions are strategic in the sense that they have an ultimate goal. Praxology, boom, there it is. Anything else? Save that one. You want me to you want me to throw that one out there in a in a in a tweet or something so you can save it and clip it and clip and save. Rollo's clip and save is daily devotionals, right? It's daily readings. Humans Human actions are strategic in the sense that these actions have an ultimate goal. Praxeology, poof, got. Damn, there, there it is. However, um, God damn it, what are you, stop interrupting. <laughs> Class, be quiet. Uh, what about Hafiz is a, what about Hafiz is appealing? How does he generate traffic? I'll tell you how. I, you know what? I'm starring that. I'll come back to that. Hang on. That's actually a pretty good one. Sorry. Uh, when did Hafiz decide to start his transition? I can tell you that too. Uh, it was right around August of 2021. I can tell you that. <laughs> the hormone shots seem amazingly effective as he is speaking. Nonsense and word salad. Thank you very much. I think so. But we'll come, we'll, you'll understand. I, actually, I will get to that, that question a little bit more. Now, here we go. However, this doesn't mean that all human behavior is necessarily conscious and calculated or deliberate. When people ask me, well, you know, are all women hypergamous? Yeah. Um, are, are, are they evil bitches for like manipulating us? For the, I'm like, no, it is, it, it, it is what it is, right? It's, it's, it's female nature. Hypergamy is women's innate mating strategy. Well, it seems so horrible and evil. And yeah, that's you applying a moralistic judgmental thing or that's you, my well, options. That. that is you understanding pattern recognition is what that is. But that hy hypergamy has a purpose. You know how you stop? You know how you understand hypergamy? You know you want to be better at game. Here's how you here's how you're better at game. You understand the logic and the and the patterns, and you understand the point the the latent purpose behind the behavior. That's essentially that's what I've been teaching teaching. That's what I've been talking about for a very long time. It's understanding the patterns and the behavior, understanding the, 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 was hell. It's in the first damn book. The, the, the medium is the message. And yes, I pulled that quote from someone else. Thank you. Okay. There you go. You got me. Oh, I got wrong. Okay. But that's, but it's true. The medium is the message. What is she doing? You, you probably heard this about a gajillion time, a kajillion times. <laughs> Can we, you know, I'm working on a book of maxims. That's one of my projects right now. Juan, Juan. Uh, but, uh, anyways, like as far as being aware of that, or, or is it, in, is it, is it with malice and forethought? I would say no, largely no, I'm not saying other you know, gold diggers are gold diggers because it's malice and forethought, but are all women interested? Uh, are all women's uh, concept of love opportunistic? Yeah. It's the ones that are like overt about it and over the top about it that we call gold diggers. But when we talk about like, oh, sex work is really just a, a job and not prostitution. That's we're just we're just you know, uh, potato potato. <laughs> I mean, that's all we're doing is trying to like we're trying to square the circle or circle the square or whatever the hell it is, right? Uh, uh, here, let's keep going. A single-celled organism is behaving. Oh, sorry, most animals act without awareness, but their behaviors are still strategic. A single-celled organism is behaving strategically in the evolutionary sense when it swims towards nutrients, despite having no internal understanding of the reason for its behavior. Okay? So women are going to be hypergamous without knowing that they're hypergamous. That's just how, that's the, I keep telling you, it's the evolutionary firmware. Oh, and that's not an excuse. That's not a license to sin. That's not a license for promiscuity. That's not a license to cheat on your husband. That's not it. I'm just outlining the dynamics of a fucking system. That's all it is. That's a praxology. No one's saying it's right or it's wrong. You get to do that. I report, you decide. That's how it works.
That's a praxeology. A single celled organism. Okay, I got that. Uh, when it's some sort of nutrients. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let me continue. Green's point in this lesson is that what we do as a, has a purpose, whether we're conscious of it or not. And people, either consciously or implicitly, attempt to decode our motives for our actions. So Green tells you to be aware of how you come across and how others perceive you in order to better serve your own goals. Hmm, sound like enlightened self-interest? Because it sure shit does to me. Knowledge of your intentions might be debilitating, though. Okay, so being, what, what did we say? Anal uh, paralysis through analysis. Okay, here we go. The evolutionary biologist Robert Trivers, also, a, a, also someone I've quoted in the past, um, developed the idea of self-deception when we're in denial, right? The idea is that the best way to deceive others about our intentions is to believe that what we are doing is sincere. Oh boy, I'm, I have every, I 100% I bet you, I would, I would put, I would put a thousand dollars on the, on a, on a, a polygraph test for Hafiz. Does he believe this stuff? Is it, is it just a grift? Is this just him doing what is that? You know, no. Hafiz believes this stuff. He wouldn't be on there, you know, putting his ass on the line if this, if he didn't believe in this stuff. But we do that because we want to think that our actions are going to be congruent with what we think, right? So let me keep going here. Uh, and maybe in okay, so this is this is actually the most brilliant part of this. Similarly, the evolutionary psychologist, oh sorry, um, the evolutionary biologist Robert Trivers developed the idea of self-deception. Okay, it's to believe. Oh, damn it, get away. Stop bugging me. Uh, if you come to the understanding that the reasons why you do something is not for moral or uplifting reasons, but for selfish ones, such knowledge may undermine your goals because you become less persuasive. So if you think that it is your Christian duty to make the red pill your ministry, keep that in mind. Remember when we say, when, and this is an absolutely beautiful analogy here. Remember when we say, uh, we, we criticize women for like doing it for themselves. It's what I've called the crisis of motive. Again, you'll find that in book two. Crisis of motive. Do I do it for me or do I do it because people expect this of me? Or do I do it because I'll be aff affirmed for this? Do I believe in what I believe because people will pat me on the back for it? And the people who give me shit, well, yeah, the, the, the reward of being patted on the back for it is greater than, the, than having to go through the sacrifice of people giving me shit for it. it. Has nothing to do with the praxeology. It has nothing to do with the mathematics. It's just about like, how do I self-perceive as a result of that? So it's self-deception. The idea is that the best way to deceive others about our intentions is to believe that what we are doing is sincere. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. That's the whole thing. Remember when, when guys say, well, you know what? You shouldn't learn game because that's fake. You're being inauthentic and any girl will figure you out. Okay, well, <laughs> the idea is that the best way to deceive others about our intentions is to believe that what we're doing is sincere. So who is sincere? The guy who did all the work and everything or the guy who's like, you know what? I'm going to find an end run around how to get laid. <laughs> yeah. These are, this is the shit that keeps me up at night. Uh, if you keep, to, if you come to the understanding of the reasons why you do something is not for moral or uplifting reasons, but for selfish ones, such knowledge may undermine your goals because you become less persuasive. So if you doubt yourself, you're not going to be able to persuade others about that. And by the way, you'll see that in action right here. <laughs> Similarly, the evolutionary psycho uh, psychiatrist, by the way, there's a distinction between those two. Randolph Nisi, Nice um, has suggested that the defensive mechanism of repression, burying a mental content that has painful emotions, may be an adaptation to inhibit mental pain in the same way the endorphin system limits physical pain. I thought that was, that, that was absolutely fascinating. Like it's, it's a buffer against feeling pain. It's like, it's like an insulation, right? So uh, if you feel guilty for performing certain actions for selfish reasons, like mocking someone to reduce their status or relative to yours, repression kicks in and instead you believe you are doing them more honorable. Them, uh, you're doing... You're doing them for more honorable reasons, like you're mocking someone.
to teach them a valuable lesson about humility. Like that's the that's the the, the latent purpose. Everything that I've just described here between the, those last uh, Robert Trivers and then Randolph Neeser. Praxology, that's praxology right there. Pearl, that's praxology. Hafiz, that's a praxology. It's the study that people that people do shit for because they have like there's a, a latent purpose behind it. That's what it's about. It's not an ideology. It's not a cult. It's not a belief set. I am not the high poobah of the, inter of, of the, the internets of the red pill. I, as much as I'm happy to have the, you know, give me the flowers. Great. That's great. But you know, you're, I'm, I'm the messenger. I'm not the cult. I'm, I lead a, I lead an army. I don't lead a cult. So this is self-knowledge. Oh, so is this self-knowledge and conscious as opposed to unconscious awareness of our strategic mo motives? Are they beneficial? Okay. Now think of this as a J curve and I'm about to show you what the, what I'm talking about here. This is a J curve. Um, actually, I'll just, I'll throw this on the screen. It's easier to put it up there. If you guys know what a J curve is, you, you're probably familiar with what a bell curve is. So let's share the screen here. And where is it? There it is. Okay. This is a J curve and this is the one that came with it. Okay. So you see right there, you've got uh, ability to achieve goals versus self-awareness. Okay. Keep this in mind for the next part here. Being, ob being oblivious makes you ref, uh, rela uh, relatively capable of attaining your desires. Most humans and all other organisms exist at this part of the J-curve. Not a bad place to be, okay? Then once you start to gain awareness of your inner drives and ambitions and how others perceive you, you become more self-conscious and less effective. See what you understand? Are you tracking with me here? But as you continue, you learn and grow and reach the point of internalizing your newfound knowledge. You level up and reach your highest point of effectiveness. Fighting, martial arts work in the same way. Okay. When you act on instinct, you will be a fairly capable, if sloppy, combatant. When you have trained for a few weeks and try to implement your new skills, you second guess yourself. Am I throwing this punch properly? Right. And then you get wrecked. Yeah, that's when you get killed in the, in the ring, right? Okay. And MMA fighter guys, John Fitch's uh, Ode, back me up on this, right? But when you attain some level of mastery, you revert back to instinct, ex executing your abilities that have sharpened and refined through this, the thousands of hours of training. Now, if I were to, like, I occasionally go out and I fence. I'm, I have been a competitive Olympic fencer when I was in my 20s. I have not fenced in quite some time. I mean, at least in competitive sense, I've never, I haven't fenced in quite some time, but I still have my gear. I still have my, my stuff, Epe and Saber. Thank you very much for all you nerds out there. Um, but if I, if somebody put an Epe in my hand, I would instinctively get, or default back to that muscle memory because I got to a point of mastery where I was pretty damn good at it. Will I be as good as I was? Probably not. And it will take some time to recondition, but that's what they're getting at here. Executing your abilities that have sharpened and been refined through thousands of hours of, of training. Okay. This is a quote. I love, this is why I like uh, Rob Henderson here. Uh, this is a quote from Bruce Lee. Before I learned martial arts, a punch was a punch and a kick was a, just a kick. When I studied martial arts, a punch was no longer just a punch and a kick was no longer just a kick. Now that I understand martial arts, a punch is just a punch and a kick is just a kick. <laughs> Be like water, my friends. So you can apply this to other human endeavors. I just wanted to point that out. I thought that was absolutely brilliant on part of, of Steve Stewart Williams. Uh, and now I will quit out of my email here so you can get an idea. So that is as best as I can give you a description as a definition of apraxiology. It's the study of that. It's a study of that J curve. It's a study of why we do what we do. Why is a punch a punch and a kick a kick? And here's the problem is where we get lost in the sauce, where, where Hafiz gets lost in the sauce is once you get to the bottom of that, of that bell curve or, or that J curve at the bottom there, when you're oblivious to it, hmm, that's one thing. When you get to the top of that, that's when things get a little bit difficult because you're so overly analytical. And what happens is when you're when you're overly analytical like that faith about things that you had uh, you created your identity on get questioned and they cease to become faith anymore and this is just by definition this is just me this is just the nuts and bolts of things if if you are, are faithful about something if you have a faith in a certain thing and then that thing is explained 
by science. So that thing is explained by just like, uh, you know, the veil is revealed. You can see he had the mechanics behind it. The magic trick is revealed. Is it magic anymore? If David Copperfield shows you how he disappears a jumbo jet, is it now magic? Is it kind of, you know, the thrill is gone? You know, observing the process changed the process. Same thing applies to faith, right? I mean, you believe in one, th you believe in something. And then after a while, perhaps it becomes something of, you know, your article of faith, your doctrines, whatever it is. When that is explained, is it still faith? Because now it's been brought, the, the metaphysical has been brought into the physical. And we can explain it with physical means. We can flip, we have words for it now. So is it still faith? You no, know, some people would say, well, it's still faith. I believe in it. See, I was right. Yeah, but it's still no longer faith because now I can show you how you got from point A to point B. Well, I had faith that it was true. Mm, good. I'm, I'm bravo. I'm glad. We need that. We need hope. We need magic. We need imagination. We need that stuff. Now, can it be taken to the extreme and, you know, be used for destructive ends? Absolutely it can. But it can also be used for self-delusion. It can also be, and especially after shit gets explained. And that's the point what I'm getting to right here is more and more and more aspects of conviction, aspects of faith, aspects of all this stuff is being confronted by Google, by data sets that some schmuck like Roll Tomasi can go get at a moment's notice. Yeah, I'm, I know it probably would suck a lot.